One question that I get asked a lot is, Hey Emily, what drawing program do you use slash recommend? And for the longest time, I'd respond with some version of, I use insert art program here, but I've been meaning to switch over to Clip Studio Paint because I always hear such good things about it. And then I wouldn't commit to fully switching over because the idea of learning how to use a completely new art program was super daunting. And I am extremely technologically challenged, so I wasn't really sure where to begin. But I've now decided finally to fully commit I'd always see artists post about whatever new feature was out, and I'd feel like I was sort of missing out. It also didn't help that most of my artist friends use Clip Studio, so whenever I needed help with a specific art problem or getting some specific effect, sometimes it'd be difficult because whatever tool or feature they were talking about was completely non-existent to both me and whatever program I was using at the time. The two features I was most interested in that I wasn't getting from my old program was the ability to download and use custom brushes and tools that aided in making comics and the ability to add text to my work. In an older video where I redrew some old comic panels about my character Plumeria, I actually had to open the drawings in Clip Studio Paint so I could add the speech bubbles and text, which were a huge help and honestly should have been the moment I moved over to Clip Studio. But like I said, the idea of having to learn a whole new art program was really scary to me. The first video I made using entirely Clip Studio Paint was actually my comfy chat video with Lily. You can sort of tell I was messing around with the custom brushes and trying to get used to the program, hence why I didn't have the time to color any of it. And even now, a month or so later, I'm still a total newbie at the program and there's a lot that I still have to learn. But Clip Studio Paint actually reached out and offered me both a sponsor and the opportunity to visit the Celsius office and have a Clip Studio developer demonstrate some of the new 2.0 features for me in person. Afterwards, I went ahead and drew a comic page myself and tried to utilize some of the tools from Clip Studio that I hadn't been able to before. So this video isn't necessarily a tutorial video since I'm still brand new and learning. And if anything, some of you watching are probably a lot more well-versed in this program than I am. So this will be more of me sharing what my initial thoughts are as someone who knew pretty much nothing about this application and its features. But first, let's go straight to the source and introduce you to the developer that will be kindly assisting me today. こんにちは、エミリさん。セルシスのスタッフの直樹です。プロの漫画家もしています。今日は私も普段使っているクリップスタジオペイントの使い方を一緒に勉強しようと思います。どうぞよろしくお願いします。よろしくお願いします。Uh, thank you so much for having me, n a o k i s a n I have just recently switched over to Clip Studio Paint. <laughs> I don't know all that much.、Uh, could you recommend me, I guess, the most beginner friendly tool? For the very first tip n a o k i s a n demonstrated for me, he said that there were a variety of preset brushes I could use to decorate the background, but that I could also search for my own brush presets online by opening Clip Studio Assets. I suggested using flowers for the example illustration that he drew, so we looked up a floral brush preset and downloaded it to add to our palette. From here, he made a circular pattern behind the drawing using the flower brush to give it a little extra oomph and make it pop more. n a o k i s a n then showed me the usefulness of the bucket tool in Clip Studio. For example, rather than tapping multiple times with the bucket tool, you can tap once and drag your stylus into the areas you want to fill with color. For me personally, I really liked the fact that I could bucket color within the line art without having to be on the actual line art layer by selecting the Refer to Other Layers option. There's also the Enclose and Fill option, which allows you to define the exact area you'd like to fill in. Whoa. Next, he showed me the new auto shading feature that recently came with Clip Studio 2.0, which is a function that creates automatic shadows. Using either the line art layer or color layer as a reference layer, you can create automated shadows using the shading assist, and you can change both the light source and the size of the light source. On top of that, you can also change the time of day, and the color of the lights and shadows will differ accordingly. Another useful feature is the use of 3D models for posing. This is a great tool for if you're in need of pose references, especially if it involves any complicated angles that you might not be used to. You can find the 3D models in the material palette, and for this demonstration, we went with the female model. You simply drag the model onto the canvas, and you can even move the camera angle around to view the model from different angles. If you want to make your own pose, you can move the individual parts of the model around, which is definitely something that may require some extra practice, but it's a lot of fun to play around with. 
Or if you'd rather select a pre-existing pose, simply drag it onto the canvas again and it'll change the model's pose immediately. If there's a specific pose not available to you in the material palette, you can look for and download poses that other people have made, just as we did with the custom brushes earlier. Aside from 3D model bodies, you can also customize and use 3D model heads. There's different preset head models, but for this demo we decided to go with the basic one at the very bottom. Just like with the 3D model bodies, you can move the camera angle around, which helps immensely with drawing any face angles that you might be weak at, like for example a side profile, or looking at the face from the bottom up. And even with the preset head models, you can customize the appearance of the heads by going to the wrench icon on the launcher bar, tapping on the head model, and customizing each individual part of the face. And you can even blend different facial features together. I asked Naoki-san what his current favorite feature was, and he mentioned he really liked how useful the liquify tool was. I'm sure every artist knows the pain of having finished coloring a part of a drawing and then realizing that you want to alter the size of a specific part, but it's a huge pain to have to redo the line art and coloring. From my experience, I admit, I sometimes would just leave it as is because I didn't want to deal with all that. But with Clip Studio's liquify tool, you can distort both the line art and the color layers at the same time without having to merge them beforehand. He clicked on the character folder that included the line art layer, color layer, and a white mask layer and then clicked on the liquify tool, and then liquefied the bun to his desired shape. You can use this tool on multiple selected layers at once, so you won't have to redo or redraw anything just because you realize too late that you made one eye a little bigger than the other. The last thing I asked Naoki-san about was how to use tools for manga drawing, since that was one of the main things that Clip Studio specialized in, and the thing that really drew me to the program to begin with. Instead of having to meticulously draw your own panels, there's a create frame tool in the taskbar that helps you create panels instantly. For example, if you use a rectangle frame, BAM! You got a rectangle frame! No rulers or intense eyeballing required. You can also use the cut frame border tool to divide panels in any way you'd like. In addition to panels, you also don't need to draw your own word balloons from scratch either. With the ellipse balloon tool, you can instantly create a classic oval balloon for a speech bubble, and you can add a tail, or even multiple, to any balloon, regardless of its shape. Thank, thank you for taking the time to show me all these different features. I really appreciate it. Yeah, now that I had some new tips and tricks under my belt, I decided to try utilizing them at home and draw my own fully colored comic page using one of my original characters. I did a sketch first using the A4 comic page guidelines and I tried out the panel creating options. I chose a pretty simple panel setup for this particular page. After I did my line art, I proceeded to the coloring stage and the refer other layers function of the bucket tool continues to be a godsend and I can only imagine how much longer this would have taken me had it not been for that. Since the character in question was being summoned, like magically, I looked for a good smoky custom brush to use and ended up downloading a useful brush set off of Clip Studio Assets, which I later used to swirl around the background of the character and then added some extra defining lines. While I was browsing the assets, I came across a curated category of recommended materials specifically for comics and manga, which included things like background assets, pens, and screen tones. So I bookmarked a few for future reference. After coloring, I decided to try the shading assist tool on the base color layer of my drawing on the standard setting, and I actually really liked how it turned out. It was a subtle change, and as someone who struggles a lot with shading in general, I think this tool will help a lot in helping me recognize shading patterns between different light sources. Seeing as how I was drawing a manga page, I of course used the balloon tool that I was already sort of familiar with from past use. In the end, this is how it looks. I didn't do much background wise, but I really like how the coloring turned out. I think the most useful tools for me while drawing this page was, of course, the panel creation and the comic page guidelines, by the way, actually helped a ton. And I also really liked using the shading assist tool, which helped make my flat coloring really pop and make the character pop out from the panels even more. Next time, I definitely want to try exploring the 3D model tools and try out a page with even more dynamic posing. Like I said, Still a huge newbie at this program, but I'm excited to expand my knowledge and all the different artistic tools I have at my disposal, which I hope will also help me improve the quality of my videos. Clip Studio is a super extensive software with a huge library of resources and drawing materials, so I definitely recommend trying it out if you're looking for versatility and some useful time savers. If you want to just try it out first without committing, they do have a free trial available. 
Clip Studio Paint is also available on multiple devices, which will come really handy for me since I've been doing a lot more traveling lately and I like to bring my iPad with me just in case I want to draw. Huge thank you again to Celsus for this amazing opportunity and of course to Naoki-san for showing me the ropes and making my intro to Clip Studio Paint that much easier.